so this story, it's, it's probably the story that's changed my life the most um, and really impacted my testimony the most. So there is, it was my second area. It's called the Westchester Second Ward. Um, and I was going on exchanges with an elder. This other was, um, I don't know if he was struggling, but I, I, at the time, looking back, um, he was having some problems and I, um, I wanted to help him. You know, I was the leader and I, I just feel like I need to go on an exchange with him. And it was, um, I remember just getting, uh, just getting there and he was just or on the exchange. I went to his area and he was just, he was just so frustrated, you know, with the work. He was just so frustrated with everything that was going on. He just feels like he just felt like he wasn't learning a lot. He didn't felt like he didn't know how to contact people. He was really frustrated with himself. And just a lot of other factors played into it. And he just told me, he was like, oh, I need your help. Like, can you can you please teach me how to contact people? Um, I don't really know how. And um, so I'm like, all right, well, that's going to be our number one focus then for tomorrow. And so as we were planning on that night, uh, we needed a goal to contact as many people as we possibly can and to just talk to everyone. And the next day, that's what we did. We were keeping track. We talked to about 60-something people, you know, and we had lots of appointments, so we were doing awesome. Um, we, we literally talked to everyone. We didn't let one guy pass without us, uh, without us talking to him, um, for the most part, obviously. In Chicago, there's only so much you can do. But uh, there's this one time where, we were we had this appointment we uh with this guy we taught this guy on his doorstep and uh we taught i don't remember what we taught him about but we just read a, few, a little bit of the book of mormon with him and just testified very strongly to the book about the book of mormon to him and it was a great lesson and then uh as i as i was coming down the the steps of his porch after the lesson after we said our goodbyes i got a very strong prompting clear clear as daylight it was as if someone spoke literally spoke in my head and it was in spanish um it was pretty cool it <laughs> was one of the one of my first prompts i had in spanish and it said uh the voice told me to, to, to it said toca mas puertas and then in english i translate to knock more doors and uh i remember just pausing you know i was putting on my helmet to get back on the bike and i was just i just sat there and i was just thinking i looked to my right looked to my left and in, in that neighborhood, all the houses looked the exact same. And I'm just like, well, you know, like where, what, what door do I knock? Where, where do I go? You know, I, I just got a prompt to knock more doors. And so I looked to my right, felt good. So I told my, I told uh, my companions and the other Hinsha, I said, hey, we, we need to knock more doors. And I, I'm like, I don't know why, but I, I, I really feel like that we need to go knock some doors and he kind of looks at me and he's kind of gives me that like that look like oh what are, you, what are you talking about like we don't do tracking this area there's so many hispanics on the street we just contact you know and he's like all right but whatever you say you know if you have that feeling let's do it and um and so we just put our bikes left them there and we just started knocking the next house to the to the right of this house um knocked on it no answer and so i was like okay Walked down the steps again, went to the next house, and um, as I was walking up the stairs, um, that same voice came back, and it told me, it said, in these words, it said, this is the house. And I remember saying that out loud to my companion, and I, I looked over and I told him, like, this is the house. And he looked at me kind of with those eyes, like, that I'm crazy. And that he's like, what? How do, you, how do you know that? You know, kind of like that look. And he's like, oh, whatever, you know, kind of along with it, being a good companion. And I knocked on the door. Uh, no answer. Knocked again. And this, I'll never forget this, this young man named Ricardo um, answered the door. He was about, about my age at the time, so he was about 19 years old, I think. Opens up the door and he's like, "Hey, how's it going?" I'm like, "Hey, how are you?" And he's like, "He's like, good. Well, what, what can I help you with?" And uh, he's an Hispanic guy. He's talking to us in English though. And um, <laughs> my companion, other Hinsha, he gets really excited, um, and he's just like, "Hey, how's it going? You know, we're you know we're missionaries for the Church of Jesus Christ, Latter Day Saints, and you know we we just want to teach you a message about Christ. We're really, you know." And he starts going off and. Um, 
starts talking about our message. And he was, very, he, was really, he was a little bit overbearing, and he was just really excited because he was just a new missionary. He was just wanted to, you know, so much enthusiasm, which is awesome. But the, the Ricardo, he kind of just like, he was just kind of looking down at the whole time. I knew there was something wrong with him. I could feel it. And he kind of, when, when El Hinchu was done talking, he, Ricardo was just like, he's like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm good, but, uh, but thanks for stopping by. And then as he's closing the door, I said, hey, wait, Ricardo. And kind of like, you know, to get his attention. And he slowly creeps back open the door and he looks at me, he's like, what? And I told him, I was like, Ricardo, look, I don't, I don't know why, you know, I was felt prompted to talk on your door, but me and my companion as missionaries and as representatives of Jesus Christ, um, we get feelings to talk to people. And as we were, we were about to bike away just now, Ricardo, but I felt very strongly that I need to come and knock on your door. I know there's something going on in your life. Um, I don't know what's going on, Ricardo, but I know there's something, and I know that God sent me and my companion here to help you through this, whatever's going on. Please just just let us help you. And he kind of he goes like this. He looks at the ground and then he kind of just spaces off and was just thinking for about three seconds. He looks back up, looks me straight in the eye, and he says, "He says you're right. Uh, please come in." And and so <laughs> it's kind of funny at that point. Other Hensha looks at me and he's just like, "Oh my gosh, Elder Katowski," and like. He's like, how'd you know? He's like whispering, we're like yelling, that kind of thing. And um, I, was just, I, was just, I was just so humbled that the Lord gave me that prompting. And, and then we, he invites us to sit down in his living room. We sit down and uh, then his dad comes in. And uh, his dad, I, I swear to this day, um, <laughs> he, he had long hair. Um, he wasn't clean shaven necessarily. He was kind of had a little bit of scruff on him just walks in and he's like, who are you guys? And I kind of explained to him like, that we're missionaries and we teach you about Jesus Christ and your, your son invited us in. And to be honest, I, I really, I felt very strongly that, that we need to be here. And I know God wants us to be here to help your son. And he's like, really, you, you felt that? And I, I said, I'm like, yes, I did. And he's like, well, we'll sit down, you know? <laughs> and so we, we sat down and, uh, we just, I felt prompted to, to teach him the point of salvation, you know, that everything's for a reason. And um, they started, he started opening up. And to this day, I can see the love and worry that um, the father, his name's Ricardo as well, Ricardo, that, that he had towards his son. And that he just wanted to help his son so bad, but he just didn't know how. And he, I could just tell he's been trying and... Um, He's been trying for so long to help his son, but he, he just didn't know what to do. Um, and he was just, I've never seen so much love in someone's eyes before. And Ricardo, he just starts opening up to us about his problems and everything that he's going through. And he's been doubting his belief in God. And um, we just started talking to him and we just testified and just said that God loves you. And talking about the plan of salvation, it went amazing. And we ended up getting a return appointment after that. Um, and... In that moment, I just, it's just so humbling, you know, that God gave me that prompting to be able to, um, to knock on that door that day. And uh, fortunately, I was kind of bummed out because I wasn't in that area to keep teaching them, but um, it just wasn't meant for me to teach them, I guess. But Elder Hinch and his companion, they kept on teaching that family, kept on teaching them, and um, I remember getting a call from, from Elder Hinsha about, uh, I think it was three months later. Um, it was when I was in my, my, when I got transferred out of that area. Um, and he said that they're going to be getting baptized. And I've, in that moment, I felt so much joy. I've, I was so happy. His spirit overcame me. And I just never thought that something like that could happen from just knocking on a door. And he opened up the door, or excuse me. Yeah, like when, when he opened up the door, I just didn't think that that was gonna happen. But um, 
I, I went to the baptism. The funny thing is, is about this, is that Ricardo, the son, to this day, he, he's not baptized, but the two parents, his mom and dad, got baptized and are still very active. And so I remember going to their, going to their baptism, and to this day, I've never felt so much joy and happiness in my entire life. I, I've, I was just tearing up. I, the Spirit was just so strong. I, you could just feel God's love for me and for them, more importantly, through the whole experience. And just that whole time, I just had the feeling I just wanted to cry. But the Spirit was just so strong, and I've never been to such a powerful baptism in my entire life. And it all started with just a prompting. But it gets better, you know, throughout my mission, you know, they stayed active, they received callings, the Lord did a great job of fellowshipping them. Um, he eventually got in the Elder's Quorum Presidency, um, I'm pretty sure that's where he got his first calling, if I remember right. And I remember him getting the Melchizedek Priesthood and the Aaronic Priesthood, that was amazing. And then I went home for my mission, I kept in contact with them throughout my mission. And they messaged me and they, they told me that they told me they're they were going to be getting sealed um, in June, and I was so happy. I um, they had a date to go get sealed in the temple, and they invited me, and um, I was so pumped. So I took off work for the weekend. Got to go visit the my mission again to see everyone, and just just being in the the celestial room for that sealing was it's one of the most sacred experiences I've had in my entire life. And just seeing the happiness that the gospel brought them, seeing them cry in front of me and telling me, Elder Katowski, thank you so much for, for bringing the gospel into my life. It was one of the, the best moments of my entire life. Just them just saying my name and saying, and just, just telling me thank you for obeying that prompting and knocking on our door that day. God knew we needed it. And it's just such, such a special bond between me and that family. And um, to this day, we keep in contact. Um, they're doing great. Um, Ricardo's coming along. <laughs> uh, he's awesome. I love that guy uh, and the son, both of them and the mom. And it's just such a sacred experience that I wouldn't change anything for.